Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, we're going to learn how to factorize um, by completing the square. Alright, here we go. Uh, we've uh, gone through a couple of examples in the past to, to fa uh, factorize trinomials. Uh, first one was something like that, just a very basic start finding two factors of 6 to add up to 7 um, and then if you have a coefficient of x squared um, you then wanting to work out if you can take out a highest common factor of all three in this case 4 and then you can solve it as uh, the same as the top uh, these are monic uh, situations okay uh, then we've entered most recently with non-monic and what happens here is that there are no common factors with the three terms. And so there was a different situation um, or different method to, to solve it. Uh, today we are going to factorize by completing the square. And an example that we're going to run through is 4x, uh, x squared plus 4x plus 1. Notice that there are no factors of 1 that add up to 4, so it doesn't work with the top method. There are no common factors to take out, which does not apply to the second method. And we cannot um, also multiply A and C together uh, to work out how to solve it uh, as a non-monic situation. So we're going to look at it as a... Um, as a way to complete it by, or factorize it by completing the square. Uh, firstly, I'm going to give you a bit of a visual. I'm going to start off with a square here. Okay. And the length of the square is x. So this side will also be x. And then if I asked to find the area of this square, it's going to be x squared. Okay. I'm going to extend this square now, make it into a rectangle. I might do the same here and make it a rectangle. This little addition to the length, I'm going to call it 3. And I'm also going to call this little extension down the bottom 3 as well. Okay, so it's just the same on both sides. To find the area of this little rectangle here, it's going to be length times width, so 3 times x is 3x. And that also applies to the bottom here. So this is x, and that is 3, so the area of that is going to be 3x. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense so far. Now, just to add to all of this, we're wanting to complete the square. And see how we've got this little bit that is missing okay what is that little bit if you look at your measurements this side is 3 that side is 3 so 3 and 3 3 times 3 is 9 okay now I've got one big square okay and if we add up all the components to find the area of this whole square will have x squared plus 3x plus 3x. So now there's two of them, two of these 3x's. It's going to be 6 because 3 plus 3 is 6. And then we have this last little addition, which is 9. Now, if you factorize this as a, a perfect square, you'll have... Um, a fact, or you have x plus 3, x plus 3. So x plus 3 is uh, factorizing this term. Okay. Now, just to move on, we have this form for our trinomial ax squared plus bx plus c. In this case, b here is a 6. Okay. Now, in reference to to work out what 9 is. So I'm going to sidetrack again with this example and I'm going to have x squared plus 10x. 
and I'm going to have this gap because we're wanting to complete the square okay so this is not complete yet we're going to complete it to make it a perfect square um, now B is the term here is 10 but in this first situation it is 6 okay what I'm going to do I'm going to take the value of B and I'm going to divide it by 2 okay so 6 is B dividing it by 2 equals 3 so you see how we have 3 here 3 and 3 so 3 is half of 6 but what we're also going to do is square it because 6 divided by 2 is 3 and then 3 squared equals 9 okay so what I've done is just create a little formula that works out what this third term is if we want to complete the square. Now going back to this equation here, this example, I do want to complete the square and so I'm going to use the same formula. In this case the value for B is 10. Okay, So 10 is B, so 10 divided by 2 is 5 and then 5 squared is going to be 25. Okay, if we look at this, it it is a it is a perfect square, and factors of 25 to add up to 10 is 5 and 5, so we have x plus 5 squared. So that is a perfect square. That's brilliant. That's what we want. Okay, so here's a little formula to work out what this third term is. Now, you'll be wondering, well, well, what happens here? What are we trying to work out? I've brought this example here, um, but what do I do? Okay, so I'm going to give you completing the square formula. Utilizing this term here. So we'll have ax squared plus bx, okay, plus b over 2 squared. Now when we're adding something, we want to balance it as well. So we're going to subtract the same thing. Okay, uh, you'll be wondering why, but if you're going to add and then subtract the same thing, then it'll just cancel its, each other out and become zero. So what's the point? So I will show you why we need to split up and add these two terms in um, and hopefully it will make sense. Okay, This segment is a little bit tricky, it takes a little bit of time to really understand your way around it. Um, so feel free to um, you know, watch this video over and over again or just, uh, just go back to certain segments that um, just flew over your head a little bit. Uh, but I am going to use this example and uh, use this formula as well. Okay, so here's my example. I have x squared plus 4x plus 1. Okay, so I have 1 as a, I have 4 as b, and I have 1 as c. Okay, I have not added this component into this yet. So, but that is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to now add this section into here. So, I'm leaving this the same. x squared plus 4x. Okay. Now, I'm going to add these two parts into my equation. b is 4. If 4 is b, oh, if, if b is 4, so 4 divided by 2 is 2, and then 2 squared is 4, okay? So I'm going to add 4, and then I'm going to subtract 4, okay? c is 1, so I'm going to add 1. Now what you'll find here, and I might even use a different color here, what you'll find these first three terms is a perfect square, okay? Just like this, alright? 
So you want to solve that as a perfect square. Factors of 4 that add up to 4 is 2 and 2. Um, so you have x plus 2 and you have x plus 2. And because it's a perfect square, you can simplify it as that. Okay. So we're wanting to use uh, factorize this first the first three terms as a perfect square, and that's what we've got at the moment. What we can do with this component here is we want to simplify. Okay, so this red part we're going to uh, factorize as a perfect square. Okay, and we want to simplify that segment. Okay, all right, here we go. So minus four plus one is a minus three. Okay, so now I've got x plus two all squared minus three. You go, oh, what do we do here now? Well, what you can, if you understand your uh, difference of perfect squares, using thirds, okay, um, because 3 is not a perfect square, so you'll need to involve thirds here, okay. We'll have x plus 2, and then squared minus 3. Uh, in the previous video, and I might do this on the side as well, is I want to treat anything in brackets as a group, okay. So I'm just going to go back to my trusty triangle, and I'm going to say that the triangle is equal to x plus 2, okay? So just as a, just a side note, now you don't have to use this, um, this side method. If you can get straight to the answer, that is great. But just to simplify things, because sometimes brackets can confuse people, I'm going to say that x plus 2 is the triangle. So if I rewrote it, I have triangle squared minus 3. Now we have a difference of perfect squares here, and we'll have triangle minus 3, and then we will also have triangle plus, oh sorry, the square root of 3. So triangle minus the square root of 3, and the triangle plus the square root of 3. Now because the triangle is x plus 2, we're going to rewrite that into our solution. So x plus 2 minus the square root of 3 and then we'll have x plus 2 plus the square root of 3. There's our solution here. We've got that as one part, that as the second part, and that is our answer. Okay, so this is just a little side or additional segment to factorizing by completing the square. Um, remember that we're going to be using this formula of ax squared plus bx, and then we're going to add b over 2 squared. To balance it out, we're going to subtract the same thing, um, and then we have c. Okay, I'm going to use this example here we'll have x squared plus 10x minus 4. Okay, so b is 10, a is 1, c is minus 4. Okay, we're going to add this component into the middle, so we have uh, a form that we can complete the square. Okay, so Let's put the first two terms in because they are exactly the same. Then to intervene, b is 10, so 10 divided by 2 is 5, and then 5 squared is 25. So I'm going to add 25, and because I'm subtracting the same, I'm going to subtract 25. Okay, c is minus 4. I'm going to put that on the end, okay, and what we'll have here is our perfect square, okay, remember there's our perfect square, and remember that this segment is what we simplify, 
simplify that section and you want to uh, factorize the perfect square. Factors of 25 to add up to 10 is 5 and 5. So we have, I'll use a different color, we have x plus 5 then x plus 5. Um, and to simplify that is just simply x plus 5 squared, okay? Let's uh, not forget about this whole segment. Minus 25 minus 4 is minus 29, okay? And we're going to treat this as um, our difference of perfect squares, okay? So, so we want to factorize via dops. Okay. We have x plus 5 in one bracket and we're going to have x plus 5 in another set of brackets here and because we're wanting to square root it that's what x plus 5 is and then the square root of 29 is what fills in the other part one is plus and one is a minus okay because 29 is not a perfect square then you'll need to treat it as a third